What's up everybody, my name is Kason and welcome back to the WDL. This is the first week of battle videos for season four. We are starting off with the Champions League. If you guys haven't already seen the two videos that I put up over the last week or so, they are recap videos for our drafts for both the Champions League, which we will be watching today, and the other three promotional leagues. And if you don't know what that means, but you've watched past seasons, I highly encourage you to go watch the Champions Recap video, as I do explain all of the new season four rules in that video. With that being said though, let's take a look at who all the players are in this division. I expect every battle to be super entertaining in this division as we have the best 12 players in terms of win rate from the first three seasons in this division so it should be as exciting as hell here starting from the top to the bottom this is the first pick to the last pick of the draft so that is the order as it stands right now first of all we have maverick coach of symphony of the knights we have mccrane of scarlet moon empire turambar of the fire ferrets of course ready player will of fight club sand rooster unicorn gunfight 2 electric boogaloo Always can count on Sand Rooster for a fantastic team name. Jesus LBL rocking the Straw Hats again. JB79 of the Paranoid Androids. Ram9 in the Rock Boys. Machin X of House Shoe Puff Growing Strunk. Coppola Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries. Surf Taco. Britney's Spears. And Numero 80 of the Blind Enthusiasts. I'm excited as hell to get into this video to you guys. And just so you know, uh, all series during the regular season are going to be best of one rather than best of three. However, there are going to be certain weeks where players have two best of ones to complete instead of just one. We are essentially getting 11 battles done over the course of eight weeks for each player, and we are starting off with a bang, which means week one, everybody's playing two battles, or at least in this division. I'll go over that in another, another video. But in this division, everybody has two battles, so by the end of this video, Somebody will have either a win and a loss, two wins or two losses, so it should be exciting. We got 12 battles to go over for you guys today, and let's jump into it. Get your popcorn ready, ladies and gentlemen. Season 4 of the WDL is about to kick off. We have Get Hydrated, aka Surf Taco, our two-time brand champion and defending champion, Starting off the season against Machen X as Farm is already ready to go. She's got her guaranteed hit Nullify online. And she is alongside Celebrated Jaden, who has a monster physical health shield here. And Aranea, the FF15 Dragoon type unit. And she gets that Pierce attack up for not only her, but Jaden the Celebrate as well. That is going to be some really nice extra damage coming in. As Melnia going to get her AP Restore online and protect the entire party. Machin X is rocking a double Earth plus Cecil team. As that Invocation of Free Action gives 30 AP to both of the other units. So they should have no AP problems whatsoever. And Cecil... Starting the fight with a 50% three-hit physical barrier also gives one to both of his teammates, so everybody on Machin X's side has a physical barrier. That will be nice versus Farm and Aranea. The question is, this celebrated Jaden who pops the King Bradley TMR, will he be too much to overcome? Melnia, can she reach damage here? Not quite. She's going to pop a King Bradley TMR for herself. So lots of reaction block rate, lots of haste on the map at the moment. And Earthen Invocation coming off from the Luel. A lot of those elemental resistances, unfortunately, not the ones that you're seeing on the other side of the screen here. As the attack up and the ability change for Aranea, not sure what skill that changes, but Cecil's going to kick off this fight with Reckoning of Light, 3200 damage. No crits, getting himself some defense piercing, some healing power up, and heals himself to full, though as he did expend some of his health to get that barrier online earlier. Looks like the Ranger sub for farm here. Going to do just a little bit of chip onto Cecil as Magellan's rain comes in. Huge damage. Double hits on both units and crits on both. Dropping the healing power. They barely survive. Melnia, what can you do to counter this? Castigation, I believe is what it's called. 3,800 damage onto the Aranea. She survives slightly with that 10,000 HP barrier on Jaden is massive as Cecil barely survives the farm ranger attack again. Luell, what can she do? Law of Geo Absorption on the entire team. Double kill and a good chunk of damage onto Jaden. And hold on a second. This looked like Surf Taco was just going to wipe Machin X off the face of the earth here. But not so fast. Melnia is coming in with the Limit Break. Toxic Vice. How much damage is this going to do? 4,400 on the hit along with Poison. I believe it's a Man Eater down as well. Jaden, I'm pretty sure, is going to die if he takes a turn. Holy Knight's Blade does one damage apparently i'm pretty sure with the slash tech piercing down that he dropped 
he must have 100 slash resistance right now. That's all I can think, because he only took one hit. Uh, that is absolutely wild. Dance of the Stag King, this limit break, it needs to triple kill for him to win this. If it does not triple kill, he will lose. And it does triple kill. You have got to be kidding me. 2200 health. I am pretty sure he would have died there to the poison. But Surf Taco, oh my god, had just enough AP for the limit break. You can see the Jaden only has four AP remaining. And he needed every ounce of that to kill those three units. He most assuredly would have died on the next turn. But GG's an absolutely amazing match to kick off this season. Next up to bat, guys, we have Turambar, coach of the Fire Ferrets versus McCrane, coach of Scarlet Moon Empire. And it looks like McCrane is using a team of Snow, Shell, and Kilfay. This is an undercosted team at 200, but I've said it before. And, uh, somebody said it in our draft video. I believe it was Surf Taco. Let McCrane cook. This guy brings out some interesting team comps, and they always seem to do very well. On the other side here, though, we've got Turambar with the Instill Sealed Endurance coming out from Winter Ravies. Pierce Resistance, Reaction Block Rate, gives her a three-hit physical barrier as well. And Aerith says, hey, I've got your Magic Barrier taken care of right here. The entire team has a three-hit Magic Barrier now. And the Glacella with the Keen Blade right out of the gate. An excellent first turn rotation from Turambar, and the exact same thing from McCrane. I would expect nothing less from these two amazing players. Immortal Spirit coming out from the Winter Ravi, so she has Courage online. And I don't think there's any Courage removal on the other side. I don't remember if Kilfay has Courage removal or Reraise removal. She is one of them. I think it's Reraise, but I don't know for sure. War Maiden's Pride coming out from Glacella, an absolutely excellent buff as Spirit Breaker will kick off the fight. Snow doing a little bit of damage, but not an incredible amount here. He obviously is playing that tank roll, but I'm curious to see from a crane side, does he have enough damage to win this fight? Killface rocking 11,000 health. I'm actually curious if she has some reincarnations in her. That is very cool if that's the case. I know McCrane fought last season without reincarnating a single UR unit, and he still dominated people, so we'll see if he changed that strategy this season as the Terror Slash does almost 4,000 damage to the snow. He's going to heal some of that back. Smite 2, removing the haste. And all of a sudden, that could be pretty massive if there's some sort of speed advantage for McCrane. But Winter Ravi says, hell no. Holy Knight hijinks gets the Spirit Bomb Snowball on her head. This should land a Frostbite. Kills 20 of her AP and also does a, ch a bit of damage here as a CT up for Killface. So it looks like she's rocking that Wizard Staff to try and make her go faster. What is Shell going to go for here? Is it a Haste? Is it a Quicken? We'll have to see as this Stave Collector. This is the Limit Break. Onto the Glacella. How much damage does it do? 5,300. That is quite a bit. And now Glacella is down for the count. And I will say one thing. Aerith is an amazing support, but one thing she is lacking in her kit, she does not have full life, which means this is a 2v3 for the rest of the fight. There's no bringing her back. Ravage from Snow. 1,600 damage. That physical health shield putting in work for Ravies as Snow is out of AP. And Kilfay, if she doesn't watch herself, is going to be out of AP shortly here as well. Only down to 68, and it's going to keep draining down Winter Ravies. That Frostbite isn't going to be enough to turn the table. Great Slash, a ton of damage, over 6k to both. But notice, no crits. This is one thing that I think McCrane is known for. Builds his team so well, they very rarely get crit. I think he relies on a lot of crit evasion. And it can work wonders for him. Ray of the Ancients kills another 20 AP if he had any to, to lose, which I don't think he did. Kilfay, how much can, can she do, though? A decent amount, just shy of 4k to both units. Aerith is going to have to get a heal on here soon. But Snow is able to heal himself up because he's immobilized. He can't go standard attack anybody. That's actually not good for Turnbar. Great Slash, another 1500 damage. Winter Ravis is bleeding AP here, though. And it gets to a certain point where if all units are basically out of AP, is this a fight that could potentially go to turns? I'm curious to see. Shell uh, does not, I believe, have any heals in her kit. Uh, but she is channeling a spell here with another breathing technique. Snow is just healing himself back up to full. 18 actions left. We need to keep an eye on that action bar. 7,000 is a lot from the Winter Ravis. But is Snow done healing? We'll have to see. I don't know if he still has his heal back online. Earth Staff going to drop the CT of Aerith. Does it change the turn order? The only person who jumped her was her dead ally, so no. The answer is no. As Words of Reproach again from the snow. Regen and unit attack resist. This is that Edward Elric TMR. Some damage again coming up from the Aerith. Is there any way to keep this tank alive? 13 actions left. 
And again, we're watching that action bar because this could go to turns. Crippling Cut will take out the snow. So no, he does not have a heal back coming out. Guard Haste onto the Kill Fae. She only had three AP, just the standard attack on a Winter Ravi's nine actions left here. This is just a wet noodle fight at this point. No team can kill each other. Ray of Ancients, 3,400 damage. But the one thing that Turambar has on his side is he just has so many ways to bleed the AP. 20 AP gone every time that Aerith uses Ray of the Ancients. And that limit break from Winter Ravi's was huge. The Esper could also enhance the damage on the next turn or two as Kilfay gets the Regenerator proc. Earthstaff comes out for only 2200, and I just don't think that McCrane has enough damage, and Shell, again, does not have a heal. I think Turnbar is going to win this on HP, unless McCrane can do a ton of damage on this next turn. But with only 3 AP, that's just not going to happen. She's going to get the standard attack again. Two actions left, so Shell is going to go, and then Winter Ravis is going to go. I'm looking at the health bars. I think Turnbar's is higher total? I actually don't know. It's probably pretty close. But yeah, duty failed, and this is on McCrane's side, which means Turambar does get the victory on turns and on health. We've seen it a couple of times in the last season or two where uh, the game went to turns with many units still alive. And this is one of them, man. Well-built units who just weren't taking a ton of damage. And on Turambar's side, the way to bleed all of that AP, just well done by him. Four units still left standing, but Turambar had the health advantage, so he will take the game victory this week. Fight number three for the Champions Division is going to be Ready Player Will, coach of Fight Club versus Maverick, coach of Symphony of the Knights. And it looks like Ready Player Will staying true to his team name here with Edward Elric popping his auto mails crux right out of the gate here and Axman's adaptability here for Halloween Lucille on Maverick's side. So this is a really interesting fight here. The full axe composition coming out from Maverick. Obviously, Edward Elric should be theoretically very good into Halloween Lucio. Can Grifford pocket him, though, and beat this Edward Elric for him? We'll have to see here. Call of the Wild going to get that slash attack piercing rate up on the Cyrell. I believe that also helps with accuracy as the Bar Arrow Protector. This is an interesting tech coming out from the Helena. This gives Earth Resistance, and oh my god, Edward takes one damage. I don't know for sure, but my guess is that that is 100, and 100 Earth Resistance. He can stack up a good amount, and he got extra from Helena. That is what I'm thinking. Wallbreaker does very little to the Grifford. Interesting that he went for Grifford, actually. I'm wondering if Maverick is running any sort of initial hate on him as Saintly Wall comes out from the Raldor. He's going to start entering this fight here. Disrupting Axe Throw, not a ton of damage onto the Edward. It is possible that Edward has 100 Slash Resistance, but I can't imagine that's the case. I have to imagine that it's 100 Earth Resistance here. Dispel Slam coming out from the Halloween Lucio. 3,000 damage onto the Raldor, so at least he's doing damage to somebody. As Hammer of the War Master from Grifford, absolutely awesome limit break. This is going to drop the AoE resist of the enemies here, and that's a good chunk of damage onto the Edward. So obviously only one from Lucio, but that's a lot. Mirage Faint, does he have the accuracy? I wonder if he would have had the accuracy to hit that Halloween Lucio if not for the reaction. That dropped his accuracy, and that's not a guaranteed hit, unlike the Adamantine Pillar. Demolition Fist doing some damage to the Grifter Grifford here. Disrupting Axe Throw is actually going to hit Raldor, not the Edward. But man, this Edward is still taking only one damage from Halloween Lucio. I think it's going to be too little too late, though. What sub job is Helena running? Is it White Mage or is it Time Mage? As the Adamantine Pillar comes out, the guaranteed hit. And you have to imagine if that Wallbreaker had already hit Halloween Lucio, that he would be down for the count here. Grifford going to hit and kill the Edward. And I don't think Helena has full life. I could be mistaken. It looks like she is running that White Mage sub, but I think it's too late here. I don't know if that Mirage Faint was what turned this fight or not, but it looks like Maverick is in a very, very large advantage here. Three to one against this poor Helena. And I don't think there's anything she can do about it. Grifford is going to take his turn next. Can he kill her here? Mortal Draw only doing 2,800. I am actually astounded by how well she took that. Hey, she may not have full life, but she does have raise. But it didn't go through on the Raldor regardless. Don't think that would have made a difference here. As the Dark Odin Summon comes out from Cyrell, that is going to seal the deal. And Maverick, the first overall pick 
of the Champions Division in Season 3 comes out swinging both literally and metaphorically with this three-man axe comp and beats Ready Player Will. Battle number four is going to be Sand Rooster, coach of Unicorn Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo, the sequel from last season, versus JB79, coach of the Paranoid Androids. And this fight is kicking off very, very quickly. Mashri Horn going to get that Calamity Stronghold on the entire party. Agrius was actually the first to act. She was actually very, very fast in this setup as Undying Lion is here for Elda. He is an absolutely amazing new unit. 120 costs in our format. And I will say, March of the Stag coming out from Jaden Rundall, I'm a little concerned for Sandrister. Does he have enough damage to get through this tank of Agrius and then kill the Elda? That is going to be a tall task, but two movement from Slime here tells me that he is running Bowtie, and Sandrister is hoping that he can be a tank. The problem is, though, as the, it looks like Agrius is going to cross to the other side of the map to get closer to Slime, I think Elda is basically already in position to deal damage. We're going to find out very quickly here as the King Bradley TMR went on to Sand Rooster's Jaden, but Lion's Drain coming out half of Mashri's health. She actually took that damage decently well. As she gets an auto cure, heals herself back up to full. The position I still do not think is very good for Sand Rooster, but the heal back was pretty massive. Defense up and spirit up for Mashri. Zombie TMR for Slime. He's going to walk forward, but again, this Elda is basically... It's not going to matter about the hate because he's right next to these backline units. Jaden is in range. He got so much range that he hits the Agrius, and she now gets a ton of hate here. This is looking very, very good for JB. Lion's Rain comes out and dumpsters this Jaden. He is down for the count here as Curry Wazette is going to start channeling. I imagine going to be a mega charge. Mashri, what can she do? She actually brings him back to life with the revive. The mega charge comes through for 2,800. And I actually didn't even see the debuff. I don't know if the debuff went off or not. She might have enough debuff resistance that it just didn't happen. Might have been off screen, but Hustle Dance plus one will heal Jaden. But it's not going to matter. Elda's ready to kill him again. No, he actually survives it. Lion's Drain does not one shot. But again, I, I don't know how Jaden is going to get anything done here. Frostmaw Barrage lands the AoE and kills the Jaden. He just never had a chance on this map, I think. With this position, there was no way. Nice Blessing going to full heal, but I think they're just buying time here. There are still revi revives on Sand Rooster's team, but I honestly think the only way he can win this is on turns. He needs to somehow survive with enough revives and enough heals that he just does damage right before the fight ends. That is going to be a very tall task and a very big ask. Elda is finally out of AP, but Mashri's going to have to do something huge here as the revive misses on Jade. And Mega Charge is going to take out Slime, which cancels his Zing spell, which would have brought Jaden back to life. He gets the re-raise, but it doesn't matter. Saintly Wall onto the Agrius. And Curry and Agrius, even though it seems like Elda's doing all the damage, they are being just annoying enough. Curry's doing some damage, and Agrius is just soaking up that hate. Wow, very well played. I think that's basically a perfect match by JB. I think he ended the fight with full health on all three units. Unfortunately, the team that uh, that Sam Rooster brought, I think just didn't stand a chance here. But very well played to JB. Congratulations on the week one win. The next two fighters to enter the ring will be Numero 80, coach of the Blind Enthusiasts, versus Koppel, a coach of Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries. I know I will end up messing that team name up at some point, but not this time. CD style combat coming out from the Squall here, as it looks like a full Sword Knight composition coming out from Coppola with the Engelbert, Lilith, and Squall, and full Great Sword composition coming out from Numero. So, who wins Great Sword versus Sword Knight? We'll have to see that hazard revival skill coming out from the Shutzelt, obviously after my own heart, one of my favorite units, the Keenblade coming out from Lilith, and interesting strategies. So obviously Numero 80 stuck, stacking up all his units on the one side, while Coppola stacks Engelbert on one side and the other two together on the on the opposite side. So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. It's going to take a while for this Lilith and Squall to join the fight. As Lilith is going to get some AP restore online, Stormwind Ren going to drop the agility, but not very much damage on the Engelbert. And this team, I expect to be fairly tanky from Numero 80, but I'm curious to see if they have enough damage. Pressure Hazard coming out from the Shutzelt. So both the slow chance and the stop chance, Engelbert resists both. 
So very well done by Coppola, getting his trust stones and all that kind of stuff online so that he resists those status effects. Enduring Fortitude comes out 2200 damage, giving himself some hate, and also that area of effect that reduces some of that damage. This is a really great limit break upgrade for Engelbert, makes him a much better tank. As the power break does a little bit of damage, and Stormwind Rend just kind of tickling the Engelbert at this moment. So Engelbert is doing a very good job, but the other two DPS units for Coppola still cannot join the fight. However, will it matter? Because Schutzeld is almost out of AP now. He has burned, I think, three different skills, so he's basically completely out. Retribution Drain does very little to the rain, but it might not matter. Blasting Zone does 8400, removes the Protect, and just obliterates Joom. Lilith is going to seal the deal here, and Engelbert did exactly what he needed to. He took so many hits here. The Reflex from Lilith to make it worse for Numero. Flaming Impact is not going to bring Engelbert down to Courage, and Shutzelt without AP will finally get him there. But man, that is a very small consolation prize as Winding Blade obliterates Shutzelt, and not only that, drops the healing power, which means his full self-heal does almost nothing. Engelbert is going to clean up the kill, and they might not even be able to kill this big old tank. Yes, they will. They should be able to on this turn as he only has one HP left. Rain will standard attack, cut him down. But this looks like a victory for Coppola in week one as energy trigger will remove Rain from the fight. And that is a huge win for Coppola and the Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries in week one. I wondered if there would be enough damage coming out from this Great Sword team. Uh, I don't know if Rain is in like full DPS mode here, but Engelbert is just a very solid tank, and uh, the limit break upgrade that he got, I think, is very, very substantial. So, well done by Coppola running the tank on one side and bleeding so much AP from Numero. I think that was kind of the key to the match, but very, very well played. And let's move on to the last match for this map this week. Final match on the courtyard before we head to Bamboo Grove, and it is Ram9, coach of the Rock Boys versus Jesus LBL, coach of the Straw Hats. Looks like Ram9's running a full Ice and Earth composition, I'm sure, making use of that Dark Golem. As the AoE buff is online for Helena the Black Rose, and she is alongside Mish and Uni, so just a couple of low-cost units. And the real question here is, can these three mid-tier units keep up with the, the monster damage coming out from that 140? Helena. The Keenblade coming out from Gilgamesh, an excellent turn one coming out from Ram 9, as it looks like the exact same stuff from Jesus LBL, a full protect on the entire squad, the Glacella Flagbear TMR being used by Uni. And I love these turn rotations by both sides here. Immortal Spirit here for the Halloween Ryryu. And it looks like a lot of don't die skills coming out from this team. What is this going to be? Armor Discontinuity. I wondered if it was any sort of Time Mage uh, tech here, but it is not. Looking to like to try and get barriers, courage, all those kinds of things. Just a lot of ways to try and survive the damage. Halloween Fred is actually out of buff. She's going to walk forward. Misha's out of buffs as well. And that seems to be the current theme. Everybody has used everything they can already. Arrowfall doing barely any damage on this Halloween Ryru. And it looks like Ram9 avoided trying to use any sort of haste or quicken with this Gilgamesh, and I think that's probably a conscious choice because Uni is on the other side, so probably a smart move by him. Halloween Fred is actually still out of range. It's hard to see from this angle on this map. I thought she might be able to reach from there, but she cannot actually. Gilgamesh is out of range as well, and this is going to be trouble for Ram9. All three units are going to go in a row. The spacing here is just going to be really unlucky for him. How much does Mish do? Good lord! 13,000 damage to that Gilgamesh from the Mish. I thought Helena was the carry, but apparently Mish is the carry. Good God, I am so sorry for that, Gilgamesh. Helena the Black Rose, what can she get done? This is going to be trouble. Rose Blast is 7,500. Ryru actually lives it. Halloween Fred, Drain Flurry is a good amount of damage, but cannot kill the Uni. Ryru needs to do something really big here. Creeping Terror, Limit Break comes out. I'm not even entirely sure what this Limit Break does, but I know it got upgraded. Poison on multiple units, killing the killing the Uni. Unfortunately, the Poison doesn't land on Helena, who I think is the unit you would probably want it on. That being said, Mish did a ton of damage last time and kills the Ryru this time. He has two kills to his name, as Helena has zero for the moment. Does she have the accuracy? She has the guaranteed hit is what she has, and she has Courage Removal, which means Jesus LBL is going to be victorious on the last match for this map. 
Wow. I cannot believe how much damage that Mish did to Gilgamesh. That is absolutely nuts. I don't know if he has, like, negative magic attack resist. Um, but even with the elemental advantage, I did not expect that kind of damage. So that was very, very impressive. Uh, GG's and well played to Jesus. Heading to the second map of week one here, Get Locked, aka Sandrister with Unicorn, Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo versus the Straw Hats on the other side. Helen of the Black Rose is going to get her AoE buff online. And this is an awesome team to see coming out from Sandrister, the full Mace Squad, Calamity Guard on turn one from Mashiri. And this is a very Sand Rooster team. I love to see it. Heart of Flutter from the Summer Catone as she is going to walk forward. She's got some unit attack resist. And the Limit Break comes out from Ildira. I wonder if this was intentional by Sand Rooster, the Limit Break only to hit two here. Um, he might have not have had a way to, around it if Summer Catone is just faster. We'll have to see here. Mashri's going to walk forward. And it looks like she does not have another buff to cast here, interestingly enough. Silver Wolf's Grace will get Protect on both Uni and Mish from Jesus, but that's not really going to matter. There's no physical damage on the other side. Ildira going to go Height to Resistivity. Again, maybe will matter a little bit versus the Uni damage, uh, but that's kind of it. Uh, otherwise, I don't think it really matters much. The big question here is, can these Mace units survive the damage from Helena? And then that's no disrespect to Mish, as we saw him do a ton early in this week. Hazard Slash doing 4k to the uni. But this is going to be interesting. Mish is going to walk up. I expect a Flare. No, it's a Fire Raga. AoE damage on the party. Not much. Tanked up very, very well. Uni going to follow up with the Arrow Fall. So it would nullify any sort of haste or quicken, anything like that. But Hallowed Ray is going to take out Uni. This is an early 3v2 in Sandrooster's favor. This is looking fairly decent, but the question is how much damage comes out from this Helena 7500? But the sleep lands. Mashri is now asleep. She gets a massive heal from Mildira, though. She is back to full health. Summer Catone, can she take out the Mish? No, she cannot. She cannot make it a 3v1. Mish is going to channel another spell. Another Fyraga, interestingly enough. Not something like Flare, even though it was targeted only onto one unit. She might have more unit resist than AoE resist as she gets nuked from Helena. Mashri is still asleep. The Water Gush should... Oh my goodness. I cannot believe how well that Mish took that damage. That is astounding. As Tri Denervation is going to break through this Ildira. Can Mish take her out or will she get a heal up? Sandrister needs to buy time so for this Mashri to wake up as she is taking a big old snooze. Ildira survives on how much HP? 178. She should go for a heal on herself here. She will height to Kiraga. I don't think Helena can one-shot her, but she might put her to sleep just like she did to Mashri. It's going to be the Rose Blast 6600 and the sleep lands again. I do wonder um, if Sandrister is running any sort of white marshmallow gear or something like that to resist this. The problem is the whole team is very high faith as well, which could have something to do with it. Fire comes out from Mish, going to kill the Eldira as Rose Fulmination, the limit break coming through. I expect a ton of damage onto this Mashiri. 6,200. And the healing is huge from Helena. Honestly, I think Sandrister's team had a good chance here if he didn't get put to sleep. But that sleep was absolutely crippling. The Knight's Blessing is going to come in. Curses comes in threes. will basically shatter that barrier, though, which means Helena is ready to deal a ton of damage. She only has 18 AP. Hold on. She might not deal a ton of time. Uh, yeah, I take that back. Yeah, she absolutely deleted her. Uh, Helena the Black Rose showing that she is very much worthy of that 140 cost tag. DG Jesus LBL's uh, Helena is now 2-0 and on the week. Uh, she has just been absolutely crushing people. Shout out to Mish, obviously, who did very well in this second battle as well. So, I mean, Mish and Helena looking very, very scary together. Not putting anything against Uni. He didn't do nearly as much as the other two. But a great fight, and congrats to Jesus. Next up to bat, we have Turnbar, Coach of the Fire Ferrets versus Maverick, Coach of Symphony of the Knights. Both coming off a round one victory, so they're both 1-0 heading into this moment. As it looks like a mixed comp coming out from Maverick, so not the full Axe Squad, but it is a Dark Golem synergy here with the Montleonis, Halloween Lucio, and Grifford. And it looks like a completely different changeup from Turnbar as well. Valade in the back for support with Stern Wing of Destiny and Winter Rabbies. 
So it looks like Winter Ravis has her three hit barrier online. Valade is going to go with the Ice Vitalization, which is absolutely huge. Not surprised to see Valade coming in here as it gives a lot of accuracy to Turnbar's team. He will very likely need that as I know Halloween Lucio can be very, very evasive. He is going to pop his own TMR though for some extra physical damage and some AP restore. And Grifford on his second turn will get the Elemental Chain Resist up, Strike Resist up, all that good stuff. So this would be interesting to see. Reawakening coming out from the stern. And he is a very strong unit. He can be um, mitigated a little bit with a ton of slash resistance. He does have some penetration, but not nearly as much as some of those other high-end units. But this huge limit break from Ravis, is she accurate enough to hit with that buff from Blade? I expect her to be. I expect Tur Turambar had uh, prep for this, as it looks like it does hit both. The Frostbite lands onto the Halloween Lucio, which is going to be huge for nerfing some of that AP. He lands the Mortal Draw on Stern, though, which removes his re-raise. That could be pretty massive. He's not going to come back to life with that extra CT. Convergence plus nukes Mont's health bar. Puts him down all the way to one. Can Valade land a heal here? It is very important for him to do it. No, he goes for Ice Vitalization. I thought for sure he would go for a heal. He's got to be low enough for that, and unless um, Turnbar has Cura turned off, which is possible. Grifford is going to go for the Limit Break here, though, to try and drop the AoE Resist. I didn't even mention, but Montleotis is now dead. It's a 2v3. It is in Turnbar's favor at the moment. Not a lot of damage from Grifford. That was actually soaked very, very well. Halloween Lucio's AP is very quickly falling, but he lands the kill on Stern, so it might be too late here for Turnbar. I say that, Valade has full life in his kit. He's probably gonna go for it. Yes, he will. It does land. Looks like a little bit of healing power down ner nerfed it, so Halloween Lucio's barrier is now completely gone, and he is completely out of AP. This is actually looking pretty good for Turnbar here. The question for me, as Dual Judgment comes through, it kills Stern. I said this looked good for Turnbar. I don't think it looks good for him anymore. I don't think Valade has any way to bring another person back. He's just going to spam Ice Vitalization. This basically confirms to me that he has all of his heals off. So Winter Rabies is basically dead here. She's going to get dropped down to Courage. No, I'm sorry. She does not have it. And it looks like the Double Axe plus Mont Comp is going to be victorious here. Maverick coming out of the gates very very hot here with a 2-0 start in week one over Turambar and ready player will I had to think about it for a second two absolutely stellar players to beat both of them in week one I can't imagine uh I, I mean Maverick's got to be ecstatic about this start so very well done by him GG's to both players For the next fight, we have JB79, coach of the Paranoid Androids, coming in 1-0 versus McCrane, coach of Scarlet Moon Empire, looking to try and get on the board with a win. Masterful Melody coming out from the Winter Luartha. So Winter Luartha, Shells, and Elda Leonis comp versus a very interesting composition coming out from JB79, Yuffie, Summer Kilfay, and Dario. So this is an absolutely wild fight. A lot of older units here. Battling up against each other. Very cool to see. The limit break coming out from Elda. Going to give himself some hate. Some of that courage. It is a very, very good skill for him to be a tank. He's sitting there with 13,000 health. So he is very healthy. As Puppet Master comes out from Shalza. Interesting that this looks like it's going to Winter Luartha. Oh, that is because Elda already has courage. That is why she is not applying it to them. So the entire team on McCrane's side has courage right now. And I don't believe there is any courage removal on JB's side here. As the Keenblade comes out from Dario, he's going to start walking forward. And what is Yuffie going to go for? Broom will form. So she has that guaranteed hit nullify. So I don't know if there's any way that McCrane is going to be able to hit this Yuffie. There is guaranteed hits on the other side, but I expect this Yuffie to be very, very evasive. As the Sentinel comes out for Dario, he's going to move in closer. King Bradley TMR for Winter Luartha, so she's going to be speedy, ready to deal some damage. And Shalza, what is she going to go for? 40 actions left. Right of safe passage. So a lot of really nice buffs here. Protect on the entire team. So everybody on the side of McCrane has protect and courage to try and keep themselves alive. Elda's going to go with the store. So he either has some AoE uh, attacks off or he just has like no range. 
or no accuracy. Anyway, his courage is removed. He cannot hit Dari. He cannot hit anybody. He's going to go in the middle to try and soak up some hits, though. Blinding Trinity, he takes that damage extremely well, actually. Winter Luartha going to go next. What can she find here? The Limit Break looks like on Dario. Explosive Express, this new upgrade does give her a nice little 5,000 HP shield of both damage types and some HP uh, absorb as well as auto restore. So a very nice limit break upgrade. Aragub Blade going to remove any buffs that Elda had online, but Shells is ready to go. I expect some sort of heal to come in here. Summer Killfay with 61 AP. What can she get done? And she's going to go for the limit break. This is something I haven't seen in a long time, but it's an awesome limit break. Summer Fatal, how much damage is it going to do the Elda? 7,500. That is a ton. He does manage to survive, though, and catches the Curative, or Curative Prayer, which honestly does not heal him for that much. Just shy of 5,000. Javelin Fall from the Winter Luartha destroys Summer Kilfe and Dario. My goodness, that was so much damage. Yuffie is now in a 1v3. And the question is here, 31 actions left. Drain Zone's going to take out the Elda. I'm not certain that McCrane has the accuracy to hit this Yuffie. So the question is, does Yuffie kill everybody in the next 30 actions? Yeah, as Paralyzing Edge misses. Does she kill everybody in the next 30 actions or does McCrane win on time? I'm pretty sure that is the question. I don't know if they can actually hit this Yuffie. Counter Trick going to miss. Fiery Banishment going to remove the Protect but still cannot get through that HP shield that Winter Luartha has online. McCrane might be able to live through this as Vivifying Supplication comes through. Elda's going to be back online. I say that enough time might pass for her guaranteed hit nullification to go away. Elda does have guaranteed hits in his kit, so he might be able to hit. I believe Void Piercer is guaranteed. I think uh, one of his monk uh, sub job attacks is also guaranteed hit. So we'll have to see. 83 AP. Has enough time passed? Does she still have the guaranteed hit online? Void Piercer comes through for 9,100. And my goodness, that Elder Leon is actually kind of put on a show here. McCrane, starting off the week, unfortunate with a loss, bounces back in a huge way against JB79, who is one of the best players that I have ever seen. So a huge props to him and very well played. On the left side here, we've got House Shupa growing strong, coached by Machin X versus Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries, coached by Coppola. On the right side, as the Griever's Wings buff comes out from King Bradley on turn one, that is the Squall TMR. As Howlet the Heaven's Blade says Mandate of the Heaven's Blade, gives himself a nice little shield as well as some other uh, buffs. Keen Blade coming out from the Lilith to get that CT up. Slash tech up is always a nice thing as well. As Fryavi is going to go Boon of the Lion. Nice tech here to get that AoE resistance. She's rocking 17,000 HP. Good lord. She is going to be very, very tanky. But the AoE resist is fantastic versus King Bradley because his best skill is Calculated Rend. If you can nerf how much damage that does, you have a chance versus him. Immortal Spirit from the Balo getting the Courage online and having him walk forward. And I like this tech by Coppola as well with the positioning. Balo on the other side of the other two units. Very similar to what he did did in game number one with his Engelbert, basically just trying to buy time, soak up damage, basically take up all the AP from the other enemy team before his damage units get too close. So the attract barrier coming out from Fryavia. She is going to walk forward. Cecil with 50 AP is in range to deal damage. He is not. Going to go with the Fairy Guard. This is the Winter Wrath TMR, which gives unit resist for another uh, unit as well as himself. And it looks like the Griever's Wing Refresh coming out from King Bradley as Balo is starting this off with a Taunting Blade. Basically no damage. Going to give himself a ton of hate, though. And how with the Heaven's Blade? He should be able to deal a decent amount of damage to this Balo. Siphonic Breaker, 7,300 on the crit is very, very nice. He healed himself back up, not that he needed it at all. Lilith's going to walk forward. Out of buffs, though. Bradley should finally be in range for a Calculated Rent, but man, no crits. Basically 2k damage onto that Fryavia. All that AoE resistance she has going for her is working wonders. She might be able to find a big limit break here. She did get the upgrade, which I believe made it a diamond where I don't think it was before. Ice Prison comes out. What kind of damage are we looking at? Decent amount of damage considering she is a tank. Obviously fortunate for the Lilith that she reflexed it here. Fairy Guard again from the Cecil. Um, I think he's running Bowtie. I tried to see earlier with his movement. I'm... 
I don't know how he wouldn't be in range to hit somebody if he wasn't. So I think he he might be. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. Maybe I missed something there. Magia Arte coming out, though. The Limit Break from Howlet does a ton of damage. Gets both Balo and Bradley to their courage. But he is ready to get a Calculated Rand. I don't think this can hit all three. Can only hit two, I believe. Basically no damage to that Fryavia. She is tanking that so damn well. But a decent mount to Cecil. And with that CT... He is going to get to go again. This Cecil is not long for this world. He was basically just a buff unit. He never really got to deal any damage as he's going to die here. Most assuredly, even with that slash chain, Fryavia just standing tall. My goodness, 14 AP on the Bela was not enough to get any skills off. I'm assuming that Coppola has probably everything turned off except for Taunting Blade here just to gather the hate. But Fryavia, I don't think she'll go for a heal here. I don't think her uh, HP is low enough, but she might go for a full life. Is that what Machen wants, though? As Bradley, if he comes back, is probably just going to kill somebody. But actually, I take that back. Bradley might be dead right here. He is going to drop. He has no re-raise. Bradley is gone from this fight. If this full life lands, it is all but over for Coppola here. Fryavi is going to go next. And Balo is a very good tank and a very good unit. He's got his new enhanced stance, stats here, but dropping the bravery is going to mean he's going to do even less damage than he would have. But Taunting Blade comes out, tanked again very, very well. And this is just excellently done by Machen X. So much AoE resist on this team. AP Devastator, though, is good damage from the Lilith and also kills the AP. How Howlet the Heaven's Blade now has zero AP because of that skill. That, hold on a minute, guys. That actually could be pretty huge. If Lilith can land another one or two of those, Coppola could still technically pull this fight off, even though the carry King Bradley is dead. A sick limit break. The uh, Cecil limit break comes out. I honestly don't think I've ever seen that in an actual PvP fight. So very cool to see. I didn't know it even had a chance to stun somebody, but apparently it does. Spillville Blade going to come up. The Spirit Up isn't going to do anything for her, but Lilith going to go for the standard attack and kill the Howlet. And guys, I thought this was over for Coppola, but now I'm not sure if she gets enough AP again for another AP Devastator. This could be over, and Machen might lose this. 23 AP left. Bryavia, can she land a kill on this basically uh, brick wall? Immovable object, Balo. He will go down. 135 AP for Lilith. So Trinity breaks. So she must be out of AP Devastator uses, I'm thinking? I think she would have used another one if she had it. She has tons of AP. So maybe not. Maybe Lilith cannot pull this off. I thought she might be able to. But I think this Fryavia is just too damn tanky. Spellville Blade going to deal a decent amount of damage. Make her even bulkier. With only five actions left. She doesn't have much AP left and she doesn't have much time left. Frog's Curse comes out. Lands the Toad on the Cecil. So he's not going to do anything of use here as she reflexes the Toad. So Coppola at least getting some style points in here at the end. But he is going to lose the match to Machen here. GG's an absolutely excellent fight. Well played by Machen X. That Fryavia was just an absolute monster. King Bradley did almost nothing to her. So if you guys are looking to try and beat King Bradley, Machen X showed you exactly how to do it. Very well played. GG. Next up, we've got Numero 80, Coach of the Blind Enthusiast versus Ram 9, Coach of the Rock Boys. Both teams looking to try and get on the board with a win here. Both unfortunately lost their first battle. As Leave This To Me comes out from Reagan, getting that nice AoE buff, and it looks like he's rocking a somewhat similar team to last time, but this time actually using the Murmur. No, I'm sorry. Uh, he didn't have Reagan last time either. He's still running Ice Earth, but a different composition. It looks like the Haste TMR is online for both the Corwell and the Winter Victora. Interesting comp coming out from Numero 80. Dialdo to tank and double Archers to try and deal the damage. Will Numero have enough damage to get through this enemy team? We'll see. Void Crash comes out for 4,300. Not too bad on the Ryru. Obviously going to give Dialdo some of that regen too. Dialdo's going to have to tank very well as the Knight's Blessing comes out from Murmur already. That three-hit barrier could be pretty huge. Corwell is not in range to deal damage. That is brutal for Numero here. Obviously, uh, a barrier break is there for Victora. I'm not entirely sure if Corwell has one. But the Courage is online for Reagan. He's going to start walking forward. Halloween Ryru going to go for a limit break. He did this last time, landed poison. Can he do it again? If so, that is a very good way to take down a tank. And, uh, excuse me, a very good way to take down your archer as well, who gets caught in the AoE. Oh, boy. That is bad news for Numero 80. Existential Deliverance. 
Not too bad. But that poison ticking for 3,319 is just a matter of time before Dialdo's going to go down. Corwell's going to get closer to the fight to get that Dispel Barrage off, which this is just bad news for Numero, unfortunately. Murmurs looks like it's going to go into damage mode. Could potentially be a Cura, but I think it's damage. She doesn't need the damage. Reagan is going to clean up, and uh, Ram9 pissed off about his first battle loss. Just puts on a clinic in battle number two. Sorry to Numero80, but very well played by Ram9. Uh, Numero is a great player. I know he will get on the board in future weeks, but congratulations to Ram9. All right, guys, the last battle of Champions Division Week 1 should be a good one. It's Ready Player Will, coach of Fight Club versus Surf Taco, coach of Britney's Spears. And it looks like Elia the Alabaster is showing her face for the first time, getting the AoE buff on alongside the Lisette and Sosha here. As Resist Magic is coming up from the Lisette, and Ready Player Will is calling the Elia Alabaster by going double Earth here. Courage coming out from Yorel on turn one here. Surge is going with the Gein Blade. So very good initial turn rotation coming out from Will here. And Renault, what is she going to go for? It looks like a haste. So she's going to haste up both herself and Urel. And it looks like Will opting to try and get Surges very far forward. And so she's going to Keen Blade for herself as well. So both teams using that to great effect. What is Eli going to go for? Shadow Dance, three hit shield. And guys, if you don't know, this is a rematch. Two players who were both in the Rundall division last season. Fun fact, Surf Taco didn't lose a single series last season. And the only series that Will lost in the Rundall division was to Surf Taco. So he is looking to try and get his revenge here. Two amazing players. Renoa going to go for another haste here. Should land onto the Surges. What can he get done? Turns out nothing as the Reflex comes out from Sosha. He does get himself a regen, but misses any sort of damage or chance to slow or anything like that. Sosha's going to hop up into the air to try and get some return damage onto him as he catches the haste from Renoa. Renoa is so far back here. Yorel going to walk forward with Iron Body Stance. Interestingly enough, looks like he uh, she has three movements, so I don't think she's using her agility passive unless there's a bow tie on her. Some damage coming up from the Elia, but honestly, Surge is doing a pretty good job tanking here. He took damage from Elia, Sosha, and then Lisette to die. These two Earth units are now in a 2v3, but can they get it done? They're going to have the elemental advantage against the Elia, who now no longer has courage, which could be huge. Yorel going to go with the Fury of the Forest Limit Break. I expect a decent amount of damage on a little set. 8,000, I would say, is pretty decent. AP Auto Restore coming out here. And now it is Surf Taco's turn to return. So Sosha going to hop way up into the air. Probably going to be AoE from there. We'll have to see. Elia, how much damage is this going to do against these two Earth units? None to Yorel, apparently. As the Sphera Historia Limit Break comes out, this is a Magic Lightning Resist drop. 700 damage. Ready Player Will just, oh my god, calling this team from Surf Taco as another reflex comes out from Murel. Honestly, I expect she probably would have taken some okay amount of damage from Sosha, but based on how much damage Renoa took from Elia, I'm pretty sure she would have been just fine against this Elia. Spirit Breaker coming out for 3,800. And this was, if you don't like seeing Elia the Alabaster win, this is an absolute brutal and fantastic showcase by Ready Player Will. Sosha doing 1,000 damage because she doesn't have AP to get anything done. Twin Strike coming out. Obviously, the reflexes are unfortunate, guys, but Surf Taco got one for himself as well. So the reflex score, obviously, 2-1 to one in Ready Player Will's favor. But I'm not entirely sure how much that really would have mattered. My guess is probably not a whole lot. As Quake comes out from Renoa... The stun lands. Still not enough to kill. Yorel should seal the deal right here. And actually, it's going to be a reflex from Sosha. So evening out that reflex score 2-2 two two on both sides. Sosha, can she get any sort of damage? Just a standard attack. I think that was leet damage, 1337, I think, if I caught that correctly. Quake going to come through. Still not enough to take her down. Honestly, this Sosha doing work here. But it's not enough, as Laia the Alabaster got smoked by these two Earth units. Very well played by Ready Player Will. Um, obviously, it's a best of one this season, not best of three during the regular season. So I don't know if it's entirely fair, but Surf Taco drops a quote-unquote series this season, which is more than he dropped last season. He did drop individual games, though, so it's not a huge change. But man, oh man, absolutely fantastic battle. And let's go and check out the standings after week one. All right, guys, there you have it. That's all the battles for this week. 
We have seven more weeks in the regular season to go after this, but I think we started off with some pretty awesome fights. There were some bangers for sure. Let's take a look at the standings after one week. We have a two-way tie for first, so only two players went 2-0 this week. You can see how much parity there is in this league and how hotly contested this division is going to be. Maverick and Jesus LBL tied for 2-0 after the start of the week. I've said before, this division is nothing but good players. If you were going by win rate over the first three seasons, these two players actually would have ranked somewhere between 10th and 12th going into this season. So the fact that they started off with a bang 2-0 right out of the gate is really cool to see, uh, taking down some of the strongest players that we have in this game. So yeah, Symphony and Knights and Straw Hats in first and second. And now we have an eight-way tie for third place, which is ridiculous. So we have McCrane, Turambar, Ready Player Will, JB79, Ram9, Machinex, Coppola, and Surf Taco, which is Scarlet Moon Empire, Fire Ferrets, Fight Club, Paranoid Androids, Rock Boys, House Shoe Puff, Growing Strong, Sword and Sorcery, Sword and Sorcery Mercenaries, excuse me, and Britney Spears all tied for third place. Everybody one in one. There's so much room over the next nine battles to go up and down. And last but not least, we have Sand Rooster of Unicorn Gunfight 2, Electric Boogaloo, and Numero 80 of the Blind Enthusiast starting out 0-2. But again, nine more battles to go. Those two players could end up 9-2 for all we know. So there's so much room to go up and down. By the end of the season, your goal is to be in the top six. That makes playoffs, and it makes sure that you don't go down to one of those promotional leagues in Season 5. So... I am super thrilled about how these matches were in week one, and I'm excited to see how they go through the rest of the season. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Look forward to three more videos coming out for week one. I'm gonna have one for each of the divisions. My plan is to have uh, this video come out and then have Heinler the next day, Rundall the following day, and was that the following day after that. However, it depends on timing. I may or may not have enough time to get those out as quickly as I want to. So bear with me if they don't come out as soon as that. But that is my hope. So anyway, that is all for I have for you guys today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Until next time, have a wonderful day.